Hello, John Britt here. All right, today we're going to try something new. I, I don't have anybody videoing, so I'm just going to do it myself, and uh, so I'm, the camera might move around a little bit. But what we're going to do is melt test, and I'm going to show you this easy, simple way to do melt test. Uh, one of the reasons I have people do melt tests is that when we're doing glazes, basically all we're doing is melting stuff in the kiln. So the first and easiest way to do is just to try some things and melt them on a slab. And then later you can uh, make that go into, say, a uh, progression blend or a line blend or a triaxial blend would be the you know next step from that. But the first thing is just to put something in the kiln, heat it up, and see what it does. All right, so let me show you here first. What we've got is, uh, first we've got to make some like slabs uh, and something to melt the material on. So here I've just made some slabs and I've put some little depressions in them. You can even do it with just a flat slab. So, I've, so here I've rolled out a slab and then I've cut it. And now what I'm gonna do is just take this uh, knife tool and fettling knife and just make some depressions. That's the simplest method. Uh, another method is uh, I've made uh, this mold. This is an Ian Curry mold and uh, then what I do is just press a slab into it. Okay, then you'd have to bisque fire that and then later what we'll do is something like this. We would take our feldspars for instance and, and just put little amounts in there. Uh, of, like here I have um, red art and I have barn art and um, here was salt here was nephsi so what you do is you take a little uh, this is called a melon ball scooper and so what I'll do is like say for instance I would take one of this whiting I wanted to see this whiting I would just get the melon ball scooper in there and then just put it on the tile like that so that didn't go, I don't know if you saw that very well, but I'll try again. And you just need a little pile like that. Now you don't always need to use that large of a scoop. You can sometimes use this as an eighth of a teaspoon. So sometimes you can use that, and or this is called a dash. You can buy those at some uh, kitchen stores. Okay. Another method, like say to do well. So like here's some feldspars that I did. And you can see them melted. Here you can see how the sodium from the nephsi flashes orange. Or like you can see here is a melt test of feldspars. Here is a um, cornwall stone. It, it doesn't melt very well. Here is custer feldspar. And here again is nephsi. You see that flashing ring. So that tells you something about how feldspars melt. Uh, you could also melt fritz. The thing about Fritz is they melt much lower. Like this melts at, uh, I, I fired this at 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I did was I put, this, I put a scoop up here of each ingredient and then I set it up on a stilt to fire. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take my pencil and I'll write down what I'm supposed to put on there. Then I will come through and, and on this case I may use less of material. So I may just use an eighth of a teaspoon, put it on there then I would, uh, when I put this in the kiln, I'd put about five of them on there. I would set it up like that and then fire it and that would allow it to run. And I would see which, you know, like for instance in this one, which melted the most, which was stiffest, which was um, milky, which crazed the most. So you can see all kinds of different things from melt tests. Here might be another example of a melt test. This is a melt test of wood ash. This one, I did not wash it. I just took it right out of the fireplace. And, and you can see all the volatiles that are coming out. This was a sample of the same wood ash that was washed. So that shows you the difference. Uh, you can do uh, melt tests of found materials. Like this is feldspar that I found in the, uh, in the road and I processed it. And you, you can see it has iron impurities, but it just shows you different mesh sizes. So here was, um, let's see, here. here was 40 mesh, here was 80 mesh, 125 and 200, all heated to the same temperature. And so that shows you what difference of the, the particle size can make. Uh, or, for instance, on this test, I melted Fritz, 3110, 3124, 3134, P25, and then I melted them at all different temperatures. 
So that helped me understand something about the melting point of feldspars. Okay, so what you should do is go and make a melt test of all kinds of your materials and fire them if you're doing reduction, cone 10, do that. If you're doing oxidation, cone 10 or cone 6, just fire your materials in there and that'll get you a handle on what they do and then later we'll talk about combining them. Alright, I hope this went well and we'll see you next time.